Kubernetes allows you to focus on the applications that matter to you by abstracting away clusters of underlying infrastructure. But when an application is stateful, meaning it needs to persist data in some form, it can be essential to have greater control over that underlying infrastructure. Today, we're going to explore tools for running stateful workloads in GKE. First, let's explore what a stateful workload is in the context of Kubernetes. To put it simply, a stateful workload is typically one that stores some form of data that needs to persist. Meanwhile, a stateless one does not necessarily store data and often could be disrupted for a short time without major consequence. From its beginnings, Kubernetes has been well suited to managing stateless workloads. When a workload does not need to maintain state, it can generally be disrupted and spun back up with minimal interruption to the service. Kubernetes is very good at auto-healing these types of use cases. Generally, when running stateless workloads, we don't get too attached to any specific instance of the workload or of the hardware. If and when a workload fails, Kubernetes will automatically replace it with a new one. In the case of stateful workloads, the workload will have constant data persistent needs of some sort. The workload may have significant dependencies on underlying hardware as it writes data to disk. These writes may be long-lived, meaning that the workload cannot simply be disrupted and spun back up. Any disruption must be handled gracefully to avoid any potential for data loss. As a managed Kubernetes service, GKE provides the normal open source tools for managing stateful workloads, such as persistent volumes and persistent volume claims, pod disruption budgets, or PDBs, and node affinity for ensuring stateful workloads have access to the hardware they need. However, there are also a number of considerations beyond the cluster itself, where GKE can provide additional help. For example, cluster backup services, built-in observability, features to ensure safe upgrades, and the infrastructure options to make sure your stateful workloads have the hardware they need. Let's explore some of these useful tools and features. Backups are a key consideration for stateful workloads anywhere. The Backup for GKE service ensures you can backup your Kubernetes workloads safely. It provides the ability to backup not only the persistent volumes containing the data for your apps running in Kubernetes, but also the configuration of the GKE cluster itself. Another important functionality in GKE is upgrades. GKE has a few upgrade tools that can help you run stateful workloads with minimal disruption across upgrades. The first I'll talk about here is release channels. The rapid, regular, and stable channels provide a regular cadence at varying frequencies to ensure your clusters are getting updated to maintain supportability. With the pace of the Kubernetes project, it can be challenging to both keep up with supported versions and at the same time, ensure minimal disruption from version changes for your workloads. Release channels and GKE's related release management tooling helps you maintain both uptime and supportability. One important way GKE ensures you can safely keep your clusters on supported, updated GKE versions is with deprecation insights and recommendations. When GKE detects that a cluster is using a Kubernetes feature or API that is deprecated and will be removed in an upcoming minor version, it pauses any auto upgrades to that upcoming minor version and provides recommendations to help you assess and mitigate potential issues. A common approach to ensure a smooth transition during an upgrade is to use a blue-green strategy. GKE offers native blue-green node pool upgrade functionality. A blue-green node pool upgrade will spin up a full set of new nodes so you can test workloads on the new version before completing a node pool upgrade. Using a blue-green strategy for upgrades can be particularly helpful in stateful use cases where continuity and stability are especially important. Be sure to check out our video on GK node pool upgrades to learn more about the strategies and tools to help you upgrade your clusters safely. When it comes to making sure your Kubernetes workloads have the storage they need, GKE has a number of options to fulfill a variety of needs. For NFS, Cloud File Store can provide persistent storage for multiple readers and writers. GKE also provides options for configuring persistent disks for your cluster with flexible sizes. And for those workloads that need high performance at very low latency, you can configure locally attached SSDs for the workloads in your GKE clusters. 
From backups to upgrades to configuring storage to suit your needs, GKE provides an ecosystem of solutions to support the challenges of running stateful workloads in Kubernetes. In this video, you learned about what stateful means for workloads running in Kubernetes and about the ecosystem of tools, features, and services GKE provides to help you run your stateful workloads safely. With the concepts discussed in this video, we're confident you'll be on your way to building a GKE cluster that suits your needs. You can get started with GKE by visiting the Google Cloud Console and checking out the links below. Stay tuned for our next videos where we dive deeper into GKE topics.